PK Chris does to kind of prevent that as a whole. Like, we're going to be moving into another matchup where a lot of it is just super heavy on the boxing. Because even though we don't really like to talk about it, Yuris has got some really good buttons to fight from like air to air yeah, yeah. and air to ground. You're going to be seeing Chris move around with a lot of PSI magnet to set up for confirms and reversals. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's going to be stalling where he's positioned on the ground. That's going to have such a huge impact on the presence and that down tilt has in this matchup. Rob's down yeah. tilt, not being able to command as much space as we're used to seeing, is going to be a big benefit for Chris. This set's yeah. starting on Final Destination. Let's see how it peels out. Ness versus Rob. Very interested to see the fact that we started on FD here because it's basically Chris is basically challenging 8 Man in terms of I'm gonna out I, like I have better fun these days because this is definitely a better oh, stage for Rob, but that don't matter. The tech check coming in and it did not cash, and now you gotta find another potential one going off stage looking for the downer and then immediately going in. PK Chris is not is not getting around. It's dinner time and he's ready to eat. Yeah, no, my boy, my boy is hungry for this. He's got top three right in his, in his reach, but he's got 8-bit right in his way. I feel like if there's anything we've seen, it's 8-bit making the reversals. He might get yep. beaten to a pulp, but he's still alive. Yeah, and even in that spot right there, 8-bit man didn't even need to hit that downer. He was too far away to make it back with Pika Thunder 2 anyways, but just to add a little bit extra, just to guarantee the KO, oh, yeah. and that was really going to 8-bit man because that could have easily derailed so fast but that's just the strength of rob being able to push a character with a like kind of weaker recovery into a spot where they don't want to be hs he didn't need the down air but he needed to make a statement and oh. after such an explosive start from chris you need to remind people and yourself that you are still here you are on the board this this isn't chris's game to take this is yours and he is looking to take the lead right here and now not getting the down throw but he's still keeping the pressure on you from keeping distance yeah, and honestly, oh my god, that was so good! Just using the Z-Drop Gyro Ooh. to get a, a tech chase out of that as well. And that covered quite a few options at the ledge to put the back air immediately answering right back. Uh, PK Chris kind of getting a little bit too comfortable over by the ledge. That move lingers forever. And honestly, this, <laughs> look, if this is... If this is like a, a, a just kind of an early look at what the set is going to be, I'm looking forward to the way the rest of this plays out. Yeah, man. It's a slaughterhouse waiting to happen. Both of these players are so good at making one hit matter and then just outright attempting clips from hit to hit to hit. But it's going to be interesting seeing those types of styles collide, especially in this current situation where there's just no escape. Both of these characters are really good at controlling the ledge. I say that as 8-bit managed to let go of control, but Chris kind of bleeding here. Yeah, there's that PK flash off stage I was talking about before as a way to kind of like navigate around potential pressure. He's probably gonna bounce. Yeah, I yeah. I had a feeling he was gonna go for the bounce because you're trying to you're trying to mess up the timing at 8 Man there, push yourself far enough away from the down air. Unfortunately for PK Chris, ended up pushing himself directly in the position of the down air. That was good coverage from uh from 8 Man. One one sim one small thing I noticed too, or uh, midway through the set, is one of the best ways to counteract those good buttons you mentioned before from Ness the forward airs and such is using angled laser to kind of check them in midair because forward air your forward air isn't normally going to beat them but what did pk chris do to answer that use forward smash a few times to push him out didn't work the last time because 8 man recognized it and waited before he tossed up the laser didn't get get it reflected back but chris was making an attempt to shut that down and that was just that was a good mindset for the matchup uh but wh how, what do you think out of 8 man's performance in terms of being able to consistently reverse like all the situations there and how he's able to kind of take back the match. I think what happened there was that Chris showed his hand way too early and showed that he has a lot of little tricks up his sleeve for turning little bits of stage control into big damage and potential stocks. And Apic caught onto that pretty quickly and just tried to play a more aggressive game. Because you could try to outsmart and outperform your opponent, but that's not gonna necessarily button them. And there is almost no better character in this game than Rob. When it comes to eating you out of the air with his buttons. Yeah, he's got a lot of great air to airs. There's only a few, and most of those few are majority of his bad matchups, like ZSS. <laughs> so uh it's um it's definitely stressful when you got a character who definitely wants the air to air, but then you get pushed off stage against a character who can easily react to when you're setting up a whole spin to get your PK Thunder 2 to get yourself back up stage. Web, no. Web, no. No. Slide it with the ZSS propaganda. Get out of no, here. No, Web, here. no. 
I, uh, uh, nope, not in here. <laughs> so uh, immediately get the hell out of here. Game two bringing us back to FD. Interesting choice, although Chris showed right away that he's willing to like play out the stage, cheese and all. But I feel like it worked so well in game one because he had a very commanding stick. And he took full advantage of all the negativities of Rob that we had established earlier on in this nice stream. He's big. Some of his really good buttons are on the slower end, and they can be outboxed if you're willing to be patient with your buttons. That's the important part, though. True enough. Also, look, hey, hey, no, no, y'all spitting lies. It's not a good look to lie to people like that. ZSS does not suck. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I, I'm from that region. I, 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 I know the propaganda machine. I don't want to hear none of that. All right, but Down Smash is going to push him on the other side. Luckily, not going to the right. And that was good mental awareness to get that forward out of the way. And then the down tilt to immediately push him back off. This is such a stressful spot. And then I like the attempt of the PK Thunder to try and you know, push him away, hopefully at ledge, but Ape Man just saw right through it. Yeah, no, we saw a sneak peek of that towards the end of game one, where Chris seemed to be aware of his mix-up options, whether it's bouncing off the ledge or coming straight vertical, but Ape has already got it on lock, how he's going to cover all of that. It's a really scary situation, though, and Chris almost managed to find his grab. You know, back throw is definitely killing Rob at this point. Yeah, that was but smart, too, because the obviously when you're up... fishing from Ape it though, is so good. It's so good. Oh, foam, I like you, too. So it's, uh, <laughs> the up air is going to cover him on the way back down. And obviously, like, you see that it is now counter fat game, right? It's, it, you want to, like, navigate around. You want to avoid all of the pressure from Ness because you don't want to get back on off stage. That's the thing that you don't want to get caught by here. And now you try to go off stage with that Nair, but we saw this with Mabel before. If you go off stage too much, luckily for PK Chris, that back air came in quicker than the, <laughs> the tented back air out of Ape Man. Oh, that top was throwing so good, but the timing just barely off on that. The reactions from Ape are a little slipping, but the option coverage is there. Like, he's got the idea on what he needs to do to respond to Chris, but Chris mixing up the timings ever so slightly is really throwing him off. Yeah, now down throw to up air. Actually, up till, and then, oh, I like that. Ape Man's trying to go for that a few times tonight, right? But it's it's been in a situation where, well, never mind. You don't need to go for those air dodge coverages when you got the back air. <laughs> an interesting match because I feel like both players are just playing exclusively with mix-ups. We're not seeing the typical bread and butters from Rob. We're not seeing him from Ness. We're just seeing pure rolling. Yeah, if, I mean, if a man is making these like defensive option coverage, just looking like like making them look like bread and butters at this point, just consistently catching him on his way in and over and over again. That back air is such a good back air. Now you got it. Wow, he actually caught the gyro. Air was so important, but um, yo, okay, Chris has got to catch on to these hot bears because Ape keeps on catching him with them. That's going to be game two, and Chris is constantly failing and controlling the ledge because he hasn't caught on to the fact that Ape is ready to scrap upwards, and a lot I mean, of Ness's really good tools are just barely positioning him above that ledge. And that last stock too, like I mean, Ness looks like he like a character that belongs on Beyblade. He should have let the gyro rip if he threw it down right at him. It might have backed him up, but unfortunately, that's one of those hindsight is twenty twenty moments. Um, I think that just FD might not be the pick anymore. I mean, I was pretty surprised about FD to begin with, but um, I think that there's probably quite a few platform stages that are not being allowed from Ape Bit Man. It's probably like I, I wouldn't even be surprised as to PS2 uh, like is somewhere we see PK Chris trying to avoid because it is it, it is Rob. I kind of want to see the Smash You need thing. something to like change things up. I don't think Smashville is available. I don't. I in this matchup, I, I think if you're Ape Man, you're banning Smashville 100 uh, percent because you need you need you need to keep Ness as far away from you as possible. Yeah, but like Chris needs to do something to be able to close the gap more efficiently because even though, huh? or you could switch characters. I guess he's not feeling out Ness here. The switch from Dark. the rise here. of Pit lately? Like, <laughs> I, the Waddy's been using Pit, and then PK Chris coming in here with the Pit or Dark have Pit. Played, have you played Dark Pit? That character's oh. so much fun, dude. And you want to know something? He loves boxing out of the sky with characters like Rob because he's got plenty of disjoints to do it effectively and plenty of ways to keep on reasserting stage control. That, I think, is going to be a really big factor to making this counter work. Yeah, I definitely, th like, don't get me wrong, I think that the pits are definitely, like, slept on. They're, they're not incredibly amazing characters, but we were talking about bread and butters. This is one of the characters that has one of the most consistent. You find down throw, nair, a down air. There's so many good things you can use. And, obviously, there's plenty more jumps to avoid 
recovery pressure. Here's the thing though, it's still Rob, and Rob does that. You have no hitbox on your recovery, so you gotta avoid down air. So what do you do? You get back on stage with a buffered option, getting out of there, and then you just get hit by side B anyways. Ape Man is cruising. Just as a note to anyone who isn't aware, when you throw down the gyro, like whatever direction you're facing when you throw that, that's where gyro is watching you. So even in a quick situation like that, amazing positioning from Apit to be able to turn that kind of a kill because that did not look like that arm rotor was supposed to get him. Yeah, and now see, here's the thing. You have, yep, that's the issue with like that right there. You have to still avoid what is a non-hitbox recovery against Rob's down air. And I, I do, I understand the pick behind Chris. You know, you, you want more jumps, you want the combo pressure. It, it's kind of similar to like if somebody has, they don't have a lock, but if they have, say, a pocket ZSS, you would want to pull that out in this matchup. But right now, Ape of Man is just staring at him. It's like, I have a lead. Your damage, you can't kill me. You can, you're, you're mostly looking for forward throw at ledge, and you're going to be looking for things like back air and down smash. But if you make a mistake, I throw you off stage, and you haven't avoided a single one of these gyros yet. You know, one tool that Chris is just refraining from using, and I think it's because he just hasn't had an opportunity to really assert ground control, is down tilt. At even these high of percentages, down tilt still leads as a consistent kill confirm. Whether or not he gets into raw bear for an air dodge read, or just puts it into up there and gets the kill. Like, Chris needs to be a bit more confident in the ground play so that he could force Ape it into the air and then start to take advantage of Pit's really good air control. Yeah, and this is, all right, there you go. Dash attack does kill. That is an option at high percent. Uh, and fourth throw as well. Oh my God, <laughs> get into double talk out there. But like, <laughs> excuse me. The, the character does suffer at higher percents to get kisses to KOs because down smash, uh, I mean, excuse me, down air, down tilt. Those, they, yes, those are both kill com confirms. But if you are a whole stock behind and you whip on shield directly in front of Rob, you take a grab. So I think that might be partially why he's a little bit afraid to go for that. Speaking of said grab. Yeah, man. I, it's just the landings. I think it's the landings. Like if we had to pick one detail here about why this counter pick isn't working and why Apip has been able to absolutely run over Chris, is that anytime Chris is coming out of the air, he's able to pick him out, sometimes literally, and just constantly put out the damage. Yeah, unfortunately, like, whoever's been flying Dark Pit has got the wrong person at the runway. Like, those those flailing up airs with the lights trying to direct you to the right spot has actually been sending everybody to death. We might need to fire Rob as a runway director at this point. <laughs> ultimate <laughs> moment. Just ultimate moment, man. Oh my god, now, oh Jesus Christ, the, the amount of options that were covered in that situation, like, you throw down the gyro, the bait out the defensive option, the reflect coming in for a change to actually get something, but gets the tech, can you get the back, yes you can, but not enough knockback to still get the KO, and look at Ape Man just staying away from neutral getup, he knows for a fact, if I neutral getup, I'm getting foreign thrown, so I'd rather take maybe an up air, because up air isn't killing me. got something off stage, man. And he's going to be more aware of these up airs. We've been seeing this from game one, but Apeg has been so willing to scrap while returning to ledge. And Chris is just not doing anything about it. Forward throw already killing at the side of our percentage. A little bit of rage behind his combo game could make this damage even, but Chris needs a confident button. Yeah, I mean, look. Also, what's up I saying this entire time? Don't neutral get up in front of Pit. That, that's what they want. They, they got. They want one thing, and it's disgusting. They want a side B. Actually, they want two things. They want that stupid side B, and they want forward throw. But luckily for Ape Man, you just yeah, you just stay in center stage. You wait for him to approach. He's got to navigate around everything. Those down Bs don't protect you forever. And at this point, it's like, well, you either come to me or I come to you. Eventually, I get this throw. Uh, however, I mean, we have seen it on Ape Man a few times tonight. If he just plays around with his. Plays around waiting a little bit too long to find the KO. He, he tends to throw a game away sometimes, and it might happen here. <laughs> like, it's definitely within the realms of oh, possibilities. Although, that landing, that was bad. They found themselves right on top of the gyro, and because of it, Chris doesn't get his button. Apid gets his grab, his throw, and his 3 0. -oh. Smooth, clean, calculated, properly done, executed in every way, shape, or form. The ones and twos are operating.